Hello, hello. My name is Noah Spickelmeyer, and today on the Sun and Soil podcast, we're going to be looking at monosodium glutamate, or MSG, a molecule that to some might conjure up visions of headaches, heart palpitations, and maybe Chinese food. This episode is going to look at what MSG is from a basic scientific perspective, the history of Americans' apprehensiveness towards that silly little molecule, and what the current science says about MSG and health. This will all be done in hopes of painting a clear picture about MSG, and I hope to dispel some of the common misconceptions, and I thank you for listening. So let's get right into it. For the past 50 years, MSG has been subjected to a smear campaign of sorts. Americans and the media love to demonize or idolize specific ingredients or components within food, and oftentimes this leads to a failure to see that food and diet are complicated, multifaceted, I guess. And... While the narrative around fat and carbs has changed dramatically over time, it's only recently that MSG has begun to get a reputation change of sorts. So let's start off with what is MSG? MSG is a salt formed between a sodium ion and the amino acid glutamate, two things that are already pretty common within our diet and essential components of our nutrition. Things like soup broths, tomatoes, or soy sauce all naturally contain things like glutamic acid or glutamate. And it should be noted that glutamate is the chemical signal that causes taste receptors to identify that umami flavor. That's why foods high in glutamate are often associated with savory sensation. The story of MSG starts when a Japanese biochemist, Kikune Ikeda, isolated the molecule from a kelp soup in 1908. Dr. Akita reportedly began his search for the umami molecule when he asked his wife what was the source of that meaty flavor in her tofu and vegetable dishes. His wife simply replied by pointing to the kelp or kombu soup. Dr. Akita soon isolated glutamic acid from said soup. A year later, Dr. Akita filed for a patent and MSG was manufactured in bulk and sold as a flavor enhancer under the Ajinomoto brand. MSG use in cooking became popular throughout Asia and then ultimately the world as the 20th century went on. And nowadays, MSG is made when food scientists isolate glutamic acid from bacterial fermentation and then use sodium to crystallize the product out of the food matrix. This creates a salt that can then be added to food as a flavor enhancer and is seen in the supermarket shelves as something like Axel. So where did the apprehensiveness towards MSG originate from? It was a long time after Dr. Akita's original discovery that the negative attitude towards MSG began to develop. It can be all traced back to a letter written to the New England Journal of Medicine by a Dr. Robert Homan Kwok, in which he described the symptoms he felt after consuming Chinese food. Dr. Kwok coined the term Chinese restaurant syndrome as a way of describing his ailments, and in his letter he listed several hypotheses before even mentioning MSG. The New England Journal of Medicine, the journal in which he submitted it to, at the time had a column dedicated to far-out or seemingly ridiculous cases, in which respondents would joke in medical terminology and respond with satire. At the time, the medical community and the New England Journal of Medicine did not take Dr. Kwok's suggestion seriously, and they included his letter in the joke column. The respondents to Dr. Kwok's letter were obviously hyperbolic, but they also made racist statements about Asian cuisine in general. Kwok's use of the term Chinese restaurant syndrome, and then the New England Journal of Medicine's response, furthered the association between MSG, Chinese food, and Kwok's described symptoms like headaches and heart palpitations. And due to the fact that medical terminology was used in the New England Journal of Medicine's response, several media outlets mistook this joke column as fact. This resulted in articles being written about how MSG and, by association, Chinese food can cause various ailments. Then, other medical journals even ran pieces about MSG, in which the New England Journal of Medicine's response was cited, despite it being satire. Due to the negative attention that MSG had been getting for a while, in the 1990s, the FDA conducted studies that looked at the connection between Dr. Kwok's described symptoms and MSG consumption. It's determined by the FDA that clinical data shows there's no causation between MSG consumption and the various symptoms described in Dr. Kwok's letter. It should also be noted that the FDA has put MSG in the grass or generally recognized as safe category. This is a list of food additives that the scientific community as a whole has agreed is safe in the customary quantities found in food. And it should be remembered that the FDA deals with things that people consume on a daily basis. They deal with food. And They're a relatively conservative organization and require very, very significant vetting of food additives. 
To this day, MSG is still on the grass list, and the FDA has an entire FAQ page on their website dedicated to dispelling the idea that MSG is harmful to one's health. In addition, I think an interesting thing to look at would be an essay called Uptaking Race, Genre, MSG, and Chinese Dinner. It dives deeper into how these false claims hurled at MSG are thought by many to be part of a larger, more ingrained racial attitude towards Chinese food and culture. I'll include it in the show notes. It's a great read. You should, really should look at it. So now that we know that science cleared the name of MSG decades ago, how should we look at MSG? How should we view it? And how should we use it in our diet? My opinion is that we should use MSG similar to salt or pepper or, I don't know, oregano. Just another tool to make food taste good. Not only does MSG not cause any symptoms like Dr. Kwok claimed, but MSG can also be a boon to one's diet, and I'll explain. MSG could be used as a super salt, wherein less salt can be used in the cooking of a dish, but all the sensory and flavor aspects can be maintained or enhanced. This concept is known as the salt fork and was coined by sensory food scientists at the University of California, Davis, my alma mater. Researchers at Davis ran several sensory tests in which two duplicates of a dish were presented to panelists, one that was prepared using salt, and then a second dish that was prepared using MSG instead. Dishes that were prepared with MSG were liked by panelists the same and sometimes more than their sodium-only counterparts. The MSG dishes were often described as more flavorful or delicious by respondents as well. Thus, the data pointed to the fact that MSG was able to maintain these desired sensory and flavor characteristics, but do so with less sodium. This is due to several reasons. The first being that MSG still contains salt. Remember, part of that molecule is a sodium ion. But per gram of MSG, there's less sodium because the other part of that molecule is the amino acid glutamate. In addition, the glutamate amino acid is responsible for that umami flavor, and so it can enhance other flavors and increase that savory sensation in a dish, while requiring less salt to do so. And while not necessary for everyone, reducing sodium intake is important for some because excess sodium can lead to high blood pressure and heart disease. And it's quite often that Americans consume more salt than needed and is healthy for them on a daily basis. The fact that MSG can be used to actually make a dish healthier is important because, as stated before, MSG has long been viewed by Americans as hazardous, and this misguided fear has perpetuated false claims about the silly little seasoning of MSG, as well as Chinese culture and cuisine in general. Monosodium glutamate is actually a wonderful tool for making dishes taste good, load them with umami, and reducing sodium intake. I cook with MSG all the time. I personally put it on popcorn. I put it in soups, pasta. I even sprinkle it on eggs. It's great. It's delicious. And to conclude this episode, I'll leave you with a quote by the late Anthony Bourdain, in which he says, I think MSG is good stuff. I don't react to it. Nobody does. It's a lie. And you know what causes Chinese restaurant syndrome? Racism. Bourdain said it best. Don't fear MSG. Go out and buy some to cook with today. That is all for the Sun and Soil podcast today. My name is Noah Spicklemeyer, and I hope that you have gained valuable knowledge about MSG. Thank you. Have a good one.